Dr. Satish. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. Welcoming everyone, welcoming our team speakers who have joined us today on the uh, on this discussion. The topic, as you all are aware, it is. It sounds a bit technical, but it is uh, not that technical. And uh, we will discuss the various issues related with it. The solution that is uh, now in, uh, you know, that is already present and what more can be done in that phase. It is QR code and data metrics code, excellent tools for digitizing pharmaceutical industry. First of all, I also thank all the participants who have joined us in good numbers and are very eager to listen to all the expert discussions that are going to happen. Second, I really thank the speakers who have joined us uh, today. I will be introducing them within a few minutes. And uh, third, we have the partner, Check It App, to thank. Uh, uh, they have joined hands and um, are also responsible for bringing this session uh, to you through Pharma State Academy, a very, very uh, healthy discussion on the topic of counterfeit issues and uh, uh, drug um, counterfeit issues. I will not take much time because all the questions and everything uh, will be uh, discussed by our esteemed panel who has joined us today. I'll just start with the first news that I am just reading out. It, it is news uh, which came today in the Tribune India, alert across country on drugs made by a firm. The seized uh, drugs are the spurious versions of leading brands manufactured by renowned companies such as Cipla, Cidus, Cadilla, USV Private Limited, IPCA Laboratories, among others. This has been news for the last few uh, continuously, we are hearing such news, and uh, we are here to uh, we are here today to you know learn about the solution. How big is this problem, and how can it be solved? Before moving ahead, I'll quickly introduce the speakers for today. We have with us Dr. Ashok Kumar Bhattacharya. Uh, he has been guiding us all over. Pharma industry veteran with over 40 years of experience in global pharmaceutical MNCs in leadership and managerial roles. He also served on Takeda Asia Pacific leadership team and earlier on the executive management team and Merck Sereno leadership team. Welcome, Ashok, sir. Thank you, Swati. Uh, we have Dr. Chandrasekhar Abhyankar with us, having more than 30 years of experience in plastics and packaging area at various positions in Indian multinational companies. He worked as a faculty in Plastic Engineering and Technology Institute, CIPET, CIS Institute of Packaging, IIP, Indian Institute of Packaging, Mumbai, Mumbai University. He was heading a lot of uh, companies, uh, R&D departments related to packaging, including SL Pro Pack Limited and many reputed organizations. Welcome, Dr. Chandrasekhar Abhyankar. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have with us Mr. Biplab Lenin an alumnus of IIT Kharagpur Law School, a qualified attorney with biotechnology engineering background, having more than 10 years of both law firm and in-house experience in dealing with contentious and non-contentious work pertaining to drugs, medical devices, food, healthcare, life sciences, and intellectual property, including patents, plant variety, biodiversity related matters. He is also registered to practice before Indian Patent Office. Welcome, Mr. Biplab Lenin. Thank you, Swati. Good morning, everyone. And then we also have with us Saurav Das, who was earlier the speaker. Also, he also joined us as speaker in one session on QR code that we did earlier, uh, six months almost now. Founder and CEO of MyRx, the prescription company with 13 years of experience in the healthcare IT industry, including business analysis and operations management. He has worked in various uh, companies like TCS and Infosys in various roles and led successful projects. Welcome, Saro. Thank you, Swati. We also have uh, with us Mr. Amninder Dilo, very active and now guiding us also at Pharmastate Academy. He has over 20 years of managerial experience and has worked for major multinational corporations, including Abbott, Pfizer, GSK, Dr. Reddy's, Astrogenica in various capacities. He specializes in strategic business planning, new product introductions, and cancer marketing. Welcome, Mr. Amninder. And, and we also have the uh, partner, the collaboration that this time we have forged with Mr. 
uh, Dare. Dare is the founder and CEO of Check It, a blockchain solution that is helping leading brands increase customer loyalty by enabling brand owners to trace the journey of their products from manufacturing to the last mile customer. The technology also provides a consumer intelligence solution that shows FMCG and pharmaceutical companies how customers interact with their products in real time. Well, about Check It, just in one line I'll uh, uh, introduce and then hand over to Dare to just quickly let us know what Check It does. Check It app is a technology solutions company for the pharmaceutical and consumer goods industry. Welcome, Dare. Uh, Thank you, Swati. Um, this is Tosin. I uh, will be standing in for Dari. He's currently in transit. Um, my name is Tosin. I'm a co-founder at Check It, and it's nice to meet everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Tosin. So um, I'll quickly then start the session, uh, Tosin, in case Dari is joining in a few minutes. Uh, okay. We'll keep the, uh, the introduction of his work and uh, uh, the company uh, after the question answer session is over. That's is it fine. okay? That's fine. That's fine. Let's proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Tosin. So quickly moving towards the topic, mm -hmm. I'll not uh, take more time and move towards a few questions which we have compiled uh, for our speakers. And I hope these questions cover most of the issues which are pertaining to the current topic and discussion. But still, if there are questions, please keep them coming. We'll take it up as as the session goes on. So first of all, uh, Ashok sir, uh, I'll put this to you and Biplab also to you. You are the person who can uh, uh, very clearly state the legal angle of what is happening in this industry related to QR codes on the drugs uh, packaging. So how important is this recent regulation for the pharma industry regarding the QR codes? And what is the status of current regulations? Any major legal compliance issues which a pharma company must take care of? So, Biplab, I'll ask you to please answer it first and then I'll move this question to Ashok sir also. Sure, thank you. So, uh, spurious counterfeit and substandard drugs in India have been there uh, since for a very long time. The authorities have tried their best to ensure uh, that uh, these kind of drugs are not circulated in the market. Uh, I'll give a little bit background before uh, you know, I explain these QR code notifications by the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare. There was a case in the Allahabad High Court back in the year 2010. The case is called as Brahmaji versus State of UP and others, wherein Allahabad High Court ordered both central and state government to take necessary actions to in order to curb many of spurious drugs and as to how computerization can supplement such efforts. In response to this order, the Drugs Controller General of India, DCGI, in order to ensure that the qualities of the drug are notified, all medicine to have a 2D barcode and a uniquely random generated numeric code. So this was introduced back in the year. And then, but this move was not supported uh, by the farmers, pharma companies due to rise in the cost. However, after the center had initiated this proposal in the, in the year 2018, but now in the January 2022, <coughs> Ministry of Family, uh, uh, Health and Family Welfare came out with a notification called as Drugs Amendment Rules 2022, effective from January 1, 2023, which amends Rule 96 of the Drugs Rules 1945. So Rule 96 deals with packaging and labeling requirements, what any pharma manufacturing companies or importing companies needs to comply with it. So this amends sub rule four, wherein every act API, which is bulk drug manufactured or imported in India, both need to have a QR code at every level of the packaging, which can be readable with a software application to facilitate tracking and tracing of these drugs. So, I'll just go through the requirement which every QR code should have. It should have the name of the API, the brand name, if any, the name and address of the manufacturer, batch number, batch size, date of the manufacturing, date of the expiry or retesting, serial shipping, container code, manufacturing license or import license number, and include special storage and conditions. So this notification was 
on uh, this notification was published on 18th January, but this will be effective very recently, which is going to be on January 1st, 2023, which will be applicable to all the bulk drug manufacturers and importers. Now the government in uh, November 17, 2022 came out with another amendment called as Drug 8 Amendment Rules 2022. And this is going to be effective on the 1st of August, 2023. This is going to amend Rule 96, wherein sub Rule 5 will be added in Rule 96, which deals with packaging and labeling conditions. But this notification and this amendment will be applicable for the final formulation drugs. So the government had identified 300 drugs and it has amended Schedule H2 of the Drugs and Cosmetics and Drugs and Cosmetics Rules. And it requires that barcodes or QR codes. So if you notice in the in the api form there is no mention of barcodes but in the drugs formulation it mentions that it has to be a barcode or a qr code in its primary packaging label or in case of adequate inadequate uh, space in primary packaging label on the secondary level which should store data and the data should contain unique product identification code proper and generic name of the drug brand name, name and address of the manufacturer, batch number, date of the manufacturing, date of the expiry, and manufacturing license number. Very important to note that this, this notification, which is going to be in effect from 1st of August 2023, does not mention any information about importers. It only speaks about uh, manufacturers. So the genesis of this is that the integration of the technology in the pharma domain Second, that it will help not only to identify misbranded or counterfeit products, but also to recall if there is a quality issue in no and no kind of quality issue which is found during the manufacturing. It will strengthen the regulatory system to monitor quality in so far as patients or consumer are concerned, because they will not be accessing APIs and they will be accessing the final formulation in so far as 300 final formulations are concerned with effect from 1st of August 2023, they'll be able to scan the QR code and they can only ensure that this product which they have received is actually manufactured by the man, no, by, by the manufacturing companies. So thank you so much. This is from my end. Thank you. Thank you, Biplab, for letting us know what the regulation states and how it progressed to what uh, we are seeing in current context. I fail to mention Biplab is also partnered legal and healthcare at Cyril Amarchandas, Amarchand Mangaldas firm. So you are hearing from uh, this uh, gu guideline from a wonderful person, a very qualified person. Thank you, Biplab. Ashok, sir, I would like you to elaborate on how important this recent regulation would be for pharma industry uh, packaging and QR codes. Yeah, thanks, Swati. Uh, first of all, Biplab, uh, excellent coverage of the new law, which has been uh, enacted now and which will uh, which pharma companies will have to follow effective 1st of August 23. Now, let's understand, you know, uh, the counterfeiting uh, is a global menace. It's uh, and not only in the drugs and pharmaceuticals, but across industries. And therefore, the QR things, code and other things uh, were discovered in Japan first. And uh, then it, uh, it uh, became popular across the globe. Now, if we look at uh, the drugs and pharmaceuticals only, uh, you know, the counterfeit products are uh, almost around 200 billion US dollars. That's the latest figure for counterfeit drugs across the globe. And uh, the worst part of it, of which I am not very happy of, is that 75% of the counterfeit drugs uh, supplied world over has some origin in India. I don't think we should have that dubious distinction that of 75% of this, uh, India contributes in some way or the other. Now, if we look into the uh, market within, uh, as per the health minister the estimates, 5% of the drugs in India are counterfeit, while 0.3% are uh, uh, spurious or uh, there. So basically, the fake drugs uh, form around 20% of the 40,000 crore uh, pharma markets uh, in India. So uh, 
we look at the magnitude, the magnitude of this uh, counterfeit or fake or spurious is huge. Now, when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry, uh, it directly impacts the patient's life. And therefore, the new thing which has been, uh, you know, uh, directives which have come uh, from the ministry, uh, I think it's a very, very welcome step. Uh, should have come much before, but it's a very, very welcome step. Why do I mention that? And why is it so important to have the QR codes? Apart from all the informations that Biplab has uh, mentioned, which the government wants, there are multiple other things by which the pharmaceutical industry can start focusing on the patients. And I think this will, this, fake drugs, spurious drugs, and all which are there, it directly impacts the life of the patient. The implementation of the QR code or the barcode which is there will help <coughs> in uh, ensuring that patients' lives are not impacted negatively. On the other hand, the sole objective of bringing back smile on the face of the patient is something which is achieved. The second thing, you know, like people have mentioned that because of certain cost factors and all the industry uh, did not embrace the changes to, be, to uh, at that point of time. But let us understand the uh, cost which goes into losing the equity and the loss of sales or, or loss of revenue of an organization because of counterfeit and fake drugs. The QR code will enable <coughs> that there is minimal revenue loss on the part of organizations uh, in, the, in the long run. So I think it's a very, very welcome step and uh, the entire industry needs to embrace it and implement it uh, today, it's 300 drugs which the government has proposed <clears throat> and that also on the new schedule of Schedule H2 because Schedule H2 is a new category which has been introduced. But I think voluntarily, why everything has to be a mandate from the government? A pharmaceutical industry, since it supports and talks about patient centricity, I think the pharmaceutical industry should voluntarily opt for the QR code for benefit of the patient. And the last point which people have also mentioned in terms of recall, drug recalls, I think the QR code ensures a smoother way for drug recalls rather than the current manual process by which we cannot ensure the total compliance in terms of drug recall. So uh, I personally feel that, uh, and talking to some of my colleagues uh, in the industry, uh, I think it's a very, very welcome step and uh, we, uh, everybody would embrace this. Thank you. Thank you, Shuk, sir. The call here is to be proactive and not reactive, uh, as I understood from Ashok sir's uh, perspective. Uh, this is a life and death situation and uh, uh, the right drug should reach the right patient on time in the right condition. Thank you, Ashok, sir, for highlighting Thank this you. for us. Thank you, Biplab, for letting us know the legal aspect of this uh, regulation, recent regulation. I am also request everyone please not to play with the whiteboard or anything uh, and let the uh, discussions run smoothly. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, Dr. Janshika, you have been there in the packaging industry. You have seen it all, not only in drugs or um, FMCG, but more in more industries, what all things are happening, how tra different track and trace mechanisms are available for packaging drug products. So please let us know what is uh, what are these different track and trace mechanisms which you have seen throughout your career in packaging drug products. Yeah, with that, uh, let me introduce something which it may not be with the track and uh, trace, but which is with the anti-counterfeiting 
uh, methods or uh, steps taken by different customers as well as the supplier of the packaging to them. So uh, it was mainly basically related to the basic material of which the packaging is made. And second, most and foremost uh, contribution is of printing. Today also, if we are talking about the QR code and the other thing, it is related to printing, most of it. So let me say that initially uh, in the 90s, the customer used to make the graphic complicated so that it should not be copied by the spurious people. So it was the starting of anti fitting measures. Then slowly they introduced the barcode, single uh, di uh, directional barcode, where you will get the limited information, like what uh, 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 this thing you have taken your production of the packaging, uh, what batch, what uh, uh, this thing morning ship, and what is the thing where it is produced and where it is shifted to the uh, customer. So it was uh, basically the function of one dimensional bar barcode at that time. Now to make uh, it is more anti counter proof. Uh, as uh, say I was in a toothpaste uh, uh, supplier, uh, laminate or laminate tube supplier. So we have taken certain this thing, like we have totally developed the new laminate for pharmaceutical, which is very difficult to make nobody can sort of it, copy it very easily so that when the product is put into the container it should not get uh, delaminated or something if it is getting delaminated that means first of all you can doubt that it is some anti-counterfeit uh, counterfeiting has been happened then with the printing uh, it can be done like you have to have a rfid code or uh, the, uh, this thing batches then otherwise you have a holographic uh, um, embedded in the packaging or you can have it in the label form and the label you are designing in such a substrate uh, that it will give on a complicated cut so if anybody wants to play with the label the label will put into different pieces so you will say that it has been uh, uh, means it has been played with it will not be taken away from the substrate very easily. Uh, second is uh, you can put a small holographic patch also in the printing itself. Uh, the third one is uh, tagants. Tagants is a chemical substance which is uh, very micro uh, granules into it and they are uh, chemically active. So if you have to put, it cannot be put in the whole printing patch. It, uh, you have to choose an area, very small portion you can put a uh, tagant uh, powder into it and print it. Uh, but when you want to take uh, sort of a thing, uh, your package has been uh, produced counterfeit, then you have to see it with the analysis. So it is not uh, visibly uh, seen by uh, normal people. Uh, but if you say that it, my product and because the complaints come from the market that this is your product, and it has been this has been happened then you can take this uh, package back take it to the laboratory and see that the presence of that tagant particles are there or not if it is not there that means it is uh, theft has been occurred so that is the, the part played by tagant uh, this thing uh, we have done some small capsules of orders also we have put in the ink again at particular this thing so that it has to be uh, separated from the other this thing it for vi visualizing for any uh, normal uh, customer means consumer like me i will see it as an ink drop i will not see that it is having um, uh, put uh, the order particles into it or not it will be very very uh, in a manual part so that is another this thing to uh, avoid the theft the third one is uh, like you have to that is again a pre-printing stage you have to use the very micro graphics into your uh, graphics when the customer put their graphics to print to uh, the uh, converter they introduce a very minute uh, micro graphics into it uh, for normal person visualizing it will not be visible with the normal eye 
So you have to have a special enlarged uh, systems for that, where you can see it. It is something like a security graphics on the nodes, uh, but it can be done with the uh, graphic uh, designer and with the very specialized people in, to doing into that. It cannot be easily copied. The third thing is uh, uh, you have to put, uh, say, for example, uh, some strips like in our uh, laminated tube, we have made some color strips of our laminate only. And while the tube was made at the uh, uh, junction of the tube, we introduced that tube. So that uh, not uh, any tube supplier can do it for that. So that is again uh, uh, separation of our uh, package from the other people. The third thing can be happening is the watermark generation of the watermark. But basically, if it is the watermark has to be done, it is very easy to do it in a paper because bank notes and other things are also having watermark. But it has to be done while the papering progress. Other thing is like you have to have a emboss this thing or specializing. Uh, we have used in our packaging also like uh, thermochromic ink, which can change the color with the thermal uh, this thing or the optical inks, which can change the uh, color with the optical UV light or the infrared light. So such thing, while visible, it will be uh, just visible a normal color, but they are actually uh, uh, IR activings or the UV uh, activings. Then uh, other things one can use in the packaging and they can be used in all sort of uh, uh, printing processes like gravier, uh, then uh, this uh, flexographic, letterpress, all type of printing they can use, but they are very common with the uh, uh, this, this thing inks, which are uh, coated in a very small portion. So, okay. So, Dr. Vyanka, you have given us a lot of, uh, you know, uh, technologies yeah, that till, are developing in till, the till that it is it. But now this one, the unidirectional barcode and two, uh, 2D barcode, it, the, gamut has been increased very vast because with the 2D, 2D barcode, you can have a st store a large data and from production till the end where it reaches to the consumer, it gives you all the trace and track. Yeah. That is not possible with even the unidirectional barcode. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhyankar, for letting us know all the things that are happening in this space. Tosin, if uh, Dare has joined, I can put a question to him. Otherwise, I'll ask you this question uh, to decode the difference between QR codes and data matrix codes. What, what is the difference, the topic of the session that we have put? Are they different? Uh, okay, Dare is there. Hi, Dare. Dare, you can remove the background and just uh, join and uh, speak. Hi, Dr. Swati. Um, so I don't know. It looks like my camera is not doing great at the moment. So I think I, do, I can just start off uh, by speaking. Um, so the difference between, look, can, I, can you say the question again? Yeah, the, the basic question is, what is the difference between a QR code and a data matrix code? Uh, okay, great question. Um, so majorly, the difference is um, in terms of uh, the regulatory standard uh, used by Global Standard 1, which is the body that in those countries, like over 150 countries globally, um, that leverages the or that creates the serialization standard. Uh, this serialization standard for basically serialization standard, that basically means um, creating unique IDs, unique identifications for medicines, right? At different packaging levels. So basically a primary packaging level you know, your blisters to secondary packaging level, um, to the tertiary packaging level, and the pallets and the SCC code, all the way, literally, right? Uh, and these unique codes are then used for aggregating the pharmaceutical products uh, and also shipping them as well as receiving them. Now, the major difference uh, between the QR code and the data matrix code uh, by the logic of GS1 is about the amount of information each of these code is able to store. Now, uh, it is believed that the data matrix code stores a lot more data, has the ability to store more data than the QR code, which scientifically proven is correct, right? Uh, which is why in most 
most countries in most places, the global standard one uh, 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 ensures or basically uh, enforces that data matrix code are used in the pharmaceutical uh, packaging in their serialization or unique identity creation um, rather than the QR code. However, the QR code has also been, we've also discovered new ways to use the QR code, right? Because you don't necessarily have to store all the information directly on the QR code uh, because the QR code rather can land, can pull the user to a landing page where all the other information can then be fetched from a server, a foreign server, right? Uh, which is how, you know, a lot of times QR code is being used, which is why you see today, you can slap a QR code on an item and then that item would be able to take you to probably the website of the company that produced that product, right? Uh, but in terms of the data matrix code, it basically can store that information locally, right? It can store it on a local device. Uh, so basically I pull that information without access to the internet. That's literally the difference between using the data matrix code um, and the QR code. Thank Hope you, thank you, Darren. Yeah, wonderfully explained, so we get that. Uh, data metrics with a lot of data storage space and a global standard. Thank you, Dari, for clarifying this. Even for me, I was not aware. Thank you so much. I'll put this question to uh, Mr. Saurav Das and uh, Mr. Amninder Dillo. If you can help us in uh, answering this question, uh, how this uh, QR code technology or even data metrics code technology for that matter benefit all departments we are discussing the packaging department currently but are there ways where it is going to benefit all departments in pharma apart from just supply chain uh, uh, side of uh, uh, this so uh, how how are other departments like sales marketing or even how how we can integrate it mr minder and saurav so the way uh, they told us, Tare told us that, you know, the QR code can get, you know, um, hyperlinked. Now, we have seen that, you know, there are you know, applications like Bitly, which shortens the hyperlink. And even a Bitly has a QR code version. So you can, you know, when you are scanning a QR code through a web-based application, it can take you to a, to a web page which has multiple hyperlinks. So one hyperlink could be for patients. One hyperlink could be on the video of the of the company. One hyperlink could be on how the you know uh, you have to engage a patients. So multiple hyperlinks could be you know uh, direct redirected from a single QR code to a web page which has got multiple hyperlinks, and based on the interest of the patient. Uh, or the end users, those hyperlinks can get clicked and the information could be shared. So you have, uh, you know, uh, one could be on even on your, you know, information about what are the constituents of the product which has gone into it, who are the manufacturers uh, or the APIs is there. So all those details, you know, rather which is spread out in, in volumes of paper, uh, or you have to scan it through a different, uh, you know, websites all could be consolidated and then put into a simple one page hyper uh, one page landing page which can get a redirection based on what is the objective of the information the person uh, he or she is uh, wants thank you thank you mr sort of you can, sort of sort of you want yes. to, anything you want to add to it yeah yeah so uh, my uh, my thing that i want to put it up is like a uh, keyword code don't treat it as a burden to uh, to the pharma industry. Rather, it is actually a boon to the pharma industry. We have always been focusing on patient centricity. We have been talking every uh, now and then that, okay, we won't be focused on the patient centricity. But the only thing that a patient carry from the pharma company is the drug. And with this dynamic QR, this QR code being placed over there is opening up a hell lot of opportunities and hell lot of possibilities for pharma industry. So not only the packaging, not only, you know, the authentications of the medications, but it is actually opening up a communication network itself. The communication between the marketing team, the communication between the sales team. Just imagine that you are, you are just uh, like scanning the QR code. The QR code also have a link. And from that link, you can go ahead, you can provide patient educations, you can have like, you know, patient engaging on your products there, you, you can also use this on your PMS studies, 
uh, depending upon case to case. So suppose uh, you want uh, some patient data to be coming directly to you and it has to be circulated through the doctors also. You can have that mechanism altogether over there. Apart from that, like, uh, you know, uh, if you want to create any video, if you want to share any information, if you want to have any offers, whatever you can think of, that can happen through a simple QR code. And uh, single use QR codes are also there. So that means once the package is consumed, that QR is not going to, uh, you know, act, uh, work. So in that case, like, although the counterfeiting is getting impacted, but uh, apart from that, at least the engagement strategies will be very personalized. So going forward, it will be opening up much more possibilities for pharma industry. And perhaps this is the beginning of the digital era. With this benchmark uh, regulations, which has come up, we can we can have many, many, many possibilities actually uh, to work upon it. So in fact, it is not only the packaging or the manufacturing, but all the departments of pharma companies now gear up together and see that small QR code in your packaging, how it can open up an entire new world for patient centricity, patient engagement, patient communications. So this is what I want to say. Much more innovations will be coming over here. Just welcome uh, with, you, you know, you know, full, uh, you know, eagerness and try to innovate in this space. This is actually a benchmark uh, thing which has happened. Just, just to add, just to add uh, another aspect probably which has been, uh, you know, not highlighted is pharmacovigilance. Absolutely. With QR code, with QR code, you know, when if there is a side effect, you know, how does a patient, you know, whether he has to, you know, uh, reach out in terms of that. And companies, multinational companies are looking for that kind of information because it is so tedious. There are a number of things to, you know, reach out in terms of if there is a adverse event which is not listed. And this could all happen if you can just scan a QR code and you can get a redirect link to pharmacovigilance. Language is another barrier. You know, with technology, when we have GPS, right from the, you know, the way the which particular area that phone is and that QR code is getting scanned, the landing page could be on different languages. Yes. And specifically in a country like India, where we have so many languages, you know, it's very difficult that everybody will understand English or Hindi. People in down south, people in north or east, if the moment they scan a QR code and based on the GPS positioning of their phone, because that phone will get linked to the uh, web uh, app and from there automatically technology is there, it will sync which particular area this phone is, the landing page will be in that particular language. Imagine the kind of experience which that patient is going to get when he's going to see that information in his own native languages. Wonderful. Thank you for adding it, Mr. Minder. So, uh, utilization is are many, uh, and and the only thing is we need to adopt it wholeheartedly, as Sora also put it. A language barrier can be uh, uh, overcome, and many more things can be done through QR codes apart from what is done already in the supply chain. And after this mandate, a lot of I, I suppose there will be a lot of innovations happening in this. Before moving to a very very important question on the even counterfeiting of QR codes. So QR code is a solution which is against counterfeiting, but what happens when a QR code is also, you know, duplicated, not safe, and what all those are the questions, uh, which I'm going to take up just after one question that I want to put to Ashok Bhattacharya, sir. Sir, how big you see this issue, counterfeiting issue happening? You just told us that it is it is not good for us that we are supplying 75% approximately to of uh, spurious drugs also. But how big uh, this issue is becoming and why, why was it very uh, uh, important for government to make it a law sort of regulation at this point of time? Uh, <clears throat> yes, Swati. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned earlier also, uh, in India, it's almost around 20% of the 40,000 crore uh, um, uh, IPM that consists of these spurious drugs or the fake drugs which are there. Uh, I think that with the government's uh, new initiatives of the Ayushman Bharat in terms of uh, uh, better health care uh, for uh, the ailing population, large population which is there, 
and uh, it is it is uh, imperative on the part of the government to ensure that uh, when the tender processes are floated uh, just because of cost these fake medicines do not enter into the system i think that's one of the things which is there uh, that is what has prompted the second is the dcgi has become very very active now and uh, b- there is lot of scanning which is this whole buddy thing which has come up uh, with the trizel is also just because of the uh, sudden checks by the uh, dcgi uh, office uh, so i think this is what has prompted um, the and health is something which uh, i know uh, all governments across the globe uh, try to use it because that's the low lowest hanging fruit which is there and all governments try to do something and uh, but that's good i'm i'm not telling in a negative way it's good that it's a lowest hanging fruit let's do something for the people uh and uh, i think people of the country deserves uh, to live a good health uh, and a good life so that's the reason i think and um, at the same time there has been lot of complaints from handful of uh, companies pharmaceutical companies and a section of the pharmaceutical association to representation to the government to check this counterfeiting of drugs uh so uh, the the opinion was quite divided when i mentioned or diplob also mentioned that earlier it was on the cost the cost was there but there were opinions which were divided between the industry uh, groups which is there i think it's time now that everyone has realized and recognized that uh, it's not the question of cost over there it's it's a question of addressing loss of revenue by way of uh, counterfeit drugs or spurious drugs and the amount which is spent in terms of anti counterfeiting measures by way of the qr code or things like that or holographic stuff uh, that uh, overcompensates the investment by way of revenue earning i think that's something which uh, the industry had started uh, understanding now and i think uh, uh, mr ashok uh, the god or even the government is listening to what you are saying because i just posted a comment on the on the chat you know and it was just a one hour before where uh, the national drug portal is going to create a single window and all the medicines which will be there will be part of it so you know there is sabka sabko dawai and sahi dawai is the new uh, you know logo for that uh, drug portal so probably you know all the medicines which we are going to consume will have a traceability and you know uh, maybe we will be able to you know find which whether whether the drug which we are taking is genuine or not just by going through that particular portal yeah you are you are absolutely right this is a this is another initiative which has just been initiated and i think also the some of the stringent measures taken by the um uh, dcgi is not to give manufacturing licenses uh, just like that for the fly by night uh, manufacturers of these fraudulent medicines which are there uh so uh i think stricter measures are being uh, taken and a lot of advantage of the digitalization is also being initiated to ensure that counterfeit measures anti counterfeit measures really help to tackle this uh, menace thank you ashok sir thank you mr mininder for letting us know the most latest update on this uh, uh, happening this recent uh, happening uh people would you like to add something to the discussion from a legal perspective here or shall i move to counterfeiting issues and what to do with qr codes if there is a chance of even duplicating them sure so so what i feel uh like any other goods if you see that the fake good also 
it simply says that be aware of fake, knowing that it is a fake product. They do counterfeiting, matching the original product. So what I believe that when these products, the original products would have the QR codes, the duplicate product will also have the QR codes because they would also print some random QR codes in their product so as to look genuine. So what at this point of time it is required by the industry at least is that consumer awareness. So if this is there, so if I'm purchasing a product down the line after August 2023, every consumer should be aware that they are checking it because they would be assumed that the product which has a QR code is genuine. They will not cross check it. So if we have the consumer awareness, once they start checking and the moment they realize that it is not matching and they are not getting the secured information, they can return that to the retailer or to the wholesaler. And if, it, if, the, if that case happens with the retailer, they could return it. And secondly, I believe that this could be misused because and that can be a financial fraud because most of you, if you if you look at the fintech area, even though everyone is aware that uh, no, when they look at the QR code, they do not know whether to pay the money or they are receiving it. So every consumer needs to. So what I so, so what I'm trying to uh, know, uh, send a message that consumer awareness has to be there on, on, the, on the ground level itself so that whenever they are purchasing the product, they're buying the original ones and not the counterfeit ones because the counterfeit ones most likely will have the similar level of packaging which the original uh, package goods would have. Well, Rightly yeah, said, uh, uh, and in fact, if you see that news also, the government is going to mandate that every chemist shop should have, uh, you know, information about the QR codes. Correct. Yeah, so, but but I'm, I'm going a step ahead. What I'm trying to say is that every consumer who is buying yeah. the product will not believe or should not believe that there is a QR code and it will be a genuine. They should scan it just to yeah. verify the position that this is a, a genuine product and not a fake product. Ashok, sir, you want to add something? No, that's what I said. I mean, the government initiative is to put banners over there. But I get what Biplav is uh, talking about, that it's not about just a QR code, but it's scanning. But Biplav, unfortunately, you and me also, you being a lawyer, I don't know, you might be scanning all the QR codes. But I, being from the healthcare industry, I just buy the medicine. I don't even... I just look at the manufacturing and expiry date. That's it. I think uh, Tosin or Dare, Dare, Dare can tell us, you know, what their technology is, and you know how that, uh, you know, real life cases if they have, where you know uh, such kind of uh, you know chances are not there that duplicacy of QR could happen. So yeah, Tosin, yeah. if you can just. I mean, guess I'm just putting these questions now to the okay. tech experts who have to answer it very simply for us. So Dare and Tosin, you have some work at hand now. And uh, this question, I'll again uh, uh, come back, which uh, Mr. Pipla and Ashok sir raised about the awareness part. So I, I believe pharma companies are listening where patient centricity lies, your campaigns could go in those directions where you are making the patients aware on the counterfeiting issues. It's a big, big opportunity for industry. And if they take it ahead along with doctors or whatever ways you think of, it will be one of the most innovative uh, uh, ways a pharma industry can reach out to their customers and consumers. Yeah, uh, Swati, so now, just a, yeah, sir. Just a suggestion, Swati. I mean, this is such a contemporary topic and this is such a uh, important topic which uh, you know addresses a huge magnitude of a problem in the healthcare. Uh, can Pharma State Academy take the initiative of preparing a white paper on this and recommendations to the uh, uh, DCGI and to the government? Why not Ashok sir? We have experts like you and Hoard. We will be proactive in this space and we will also seek help from yeah. pharma companies to be there with us to help us create a white paper regarding this issue. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for giving us this idea. We'll take it ahead. So, sure. Dr. Thanks. Swati, in, yeah. terms of, um, no, in terms of the QR code used for anti-counterfeiting, uh, um, we have actually been very experienced in that for the past four years. Uh, we've seen a lot of consumer engagement in that period of time. One of the key things that we've discovered is, of course, that there, there are speculations of the issues of, you know, QR codes being copied on product packs, 
um, and it not being efficient for anti-counterfeiting. Uh, but we have developed a technology based on the blockchain network that really enables the QR code to really hold the unique identity of that product. And then we close the loop by making sure that that QR code is only verifiable using the Check It app. Right? Okay. So literally, a consumer has to use the Check It app to verify the product. Right? That way, we close the loop to make sure that counterfeiters cannot have access to the key information embedded within the QR code. Aside from just saying, probably you'll see the product, uh, product information, that's it. But with the Check It app, a consumer can verify that the product is authentic. However, the, the most interesting part is, uh, just like uh, BipLab spoke about, is really about creating that habit amongst consumers. For it to be a habit among consumers to regularly verify products. And how we've been able to coin that with our technology is by adding incentives to the authentication process for consumers. Now, these incentives could either be sponsored directly by check it or by the manufacturers, right? So we typically advise that, and these incentives would also be received after the consumer performs another action aside from verifying the products. So other actions like taking a brief survey. So what we've done is in the authentication process with the check it platform, a consumer can verify your products see the product information, like the expiry dates, the batch ID of the product, the, the manufacturing ID of the manufacturer. And then of course, they can also trace it to see the distributor who got the products, the manufacturer who got the product as well. Um, and then they can answer brief survey questions, which are just two to three questions to win exciting rewards. Now the rewards could be loyalty points, which could convert to something gratifying for the end consumer. So it could be instant airtime, it could be raffle draw tickets. It could be anything at all that does not, so to, so to, so to say, uh, um, you know, make the consumer less excited about verifying the product. Now, this way, we are winning two things. One is we're winning or creating habits for consumers to regularly verify products, which supports the government's efforts to enable a system that is proactive to protect consumers from you know, consuming counterfeit pharmaceutical products. Now, the other benefit is that the brands directly gets the insights from the surveys to better you know, develop their product or develop their marketing strategy. So now manufacturers that we've been working with, because we've been working for the past four years with manufacturers in areas like Nigeria, I've worked, we've got worked in Afghanistan, we're currently doing something in Pakistan as well. Uh, most of the manufacturers that work with us in this market work with us primarily because they see additional value in our technology, aside from just brand protection. So we provide them with data intelligence, insights to better understand who is buying their product, where they are buying from, literally data that is most relevant to their business, because they will get that data from the type of survey questions that they create, right? So the kind of survey question, and they can have you know multiple survey questions on multiple batches. So basically, but we just advise that only three per authentication or per batch for a particular product. So you can have 12, you can have 20 questions, but we're gonna deploy them three per batch. You know, that way you would house several data points. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of our customers was able to discover that most of their patients that buy their product buy majorly by, because of two things. One, because for, um, doctors recommend them for the patients. And also secondly, because the patient gets value from using the medicine. It's an anti-diabetic anti medicine. So the patient say, yes, we see our blood sugar level drop after using this medication. And if you look at it, over 60% of those who give this response, you know, affirm to the fact that the drug was working. And over 40% affirm to the fact that they got, it, they, they got it prescribed by their doctor. So that way, intelligently, the brand can decide to start, you know, driving more marketing strategy through the doctors Right, and also speak more about the the benefits of their of their of their drug using the patient's example, right? So it's it's a more proactive way to not only create a system that you know provides insights and intelligence to the industry, but also creating a system that is enabling for also the end consumer and other other stakeholders in the supply chain to be actively part of you know the anti counterfeiting process. Uh, the, one of the sweet things that we do at Check It is that we automatically reward, in Nigeria, we reward consumers with 100 Naira 
which is about $15, for every five unique authentications that they make. And by default, it's not by any brand. Uh, and we've seen hundreds of thousands to millions of authentications as a result of this. As a matter of fact, we have over 60% uh, um, consumer authentications as compared to brands who use the mass labels who get less than 10% authentication simply because we encourage consumers to participate in the authentication process. Uh, but let me stop here. So we'll, we'll yeah. talk more about services. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you just, 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 just to add, add a point to there, another point, uh, you know, uh, major issue in, in, is adherence. Uh, I think QR codes could also be used as a tool for adherence, especially, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, chronic diseases. How many types the you know patient has purchased and scanned can also be a surrogate marker for his adherence, uh, and which could be rewarded or gratified you know through the pharma brand loyalty awards. Another is you know the doctor who has prescribed it also you know through a survey if you can get it that also is a very good insight for a for a company that you know maximum prescriptions who is the one and otherwise you know we are just going with a precedence to oblige everyone you know whom we meet like this it could be much more focused targeted campaigning and segmenting of their master list could happen uh, by the industry so a lot of a lot of uh, you know advantages which are there it's only that behavioral shift first has to be there the micro environment system has to be built and then you know probably we will mature up into those kind of applications Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amnanda. Thank you, Dare. So as I understood it, it has to be a complete loop solution because uh, otherwise this is going to be another problem that we are entering. So they, the looping has to be there that the patient scans the QR code and lands to some authentic website, which gives all the data and all those things. So it creates a secure system for everyone to be in. Uh, am I right, Dare? Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, another interesting thing is that the QR codes are logged on the blockchain network, which is why, you know, the unique identities mm -hmm. have more or less like ashes behind them. Um, so what we do is for every unique identity, we hash them. So basically we convert them into code and then we log them on the blockchain ledger, right? Which is why, you know, the circle, the loop is that when we log them into the blockchain ledger, the only way that they can, we can extract information from them when we ping them is because the Check It app is being used to authenticate the QR. So it's a closed loop. So that way you can have a third party application be used to authenticate the QR. Rather, the third party application can direct you to the Check It platform for you to then use that to authenticate the platform, right? Authenticate the QR code rather, right? That way we, we create a loop that enables or makes sure that you know, counterfeit cannot just copy the QR code and use it. Uh, another exciting thing about our technology is that we can ingest existing serializations or existing unique IDs. So if you have a manufacturer that already, you know, generates their serial code using another ERP platform, another track and trace platform, we can ingest those range of serial code by batch into our system, create unique IDs for them on the back end. And then when the Check It app verifies this existing you know, serial code in the market, it is only seeing the Check It code behind it. And based on that, it can better uh, uh, um, you know, show you the insights on those existing serializers as well. Uh, I think there are a lot of exciting things that can be done with the QR code in the market you know, going forward globally. Um, and also exciting things to be done in terms of anti counterfeiting uh, as well as uh, data intelligence. Wonderful. So there are a lot of things happening. So you have also given insights for marketing teams, what to do, how to engage with uh, the brands and doctors and patients through this uh, use of QR codes. Though the, the technology bit, everyone who wants to understand the tech part and wants to engage with Check It team, they are most welcome. I'll uh, uh, put in WhatsApp and you can connect with us for directly connecting to their team. And uh, the most important question in Indian context, and I would put it to Saurav and uh, anyone who wants to answer this. In India, many medicines are supplied in loose. Instead of an entire strip, someone will purchase half or whatever is the requirement. 
how to ensure that QR code is working in that case? What about the placement of the QR code on packaging? So, so supplying in loose, what, what to do about this problem? Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Swati. So this is actually a big problem, actually, uh, because uh, we tend to take a half a strip and loose cutting and it has been there and it will be there. So assuming that it will be there. So the position of the QR code actually in the primary packaging, many of the time the primary packaging is actually removed by the pharmacist and then the internal medicines are secondary packaging are given. So we need to put up the QR code in such a position like at least in the four right. corners or maybe in, so the position should be there. The QR code, the beauty of this QR code is actually it is a square box. So the major thing is like when you are talking about a barcode, it is rectangular and it takes a much of area so when you're talking about a qr code if you are placing it in the four corners or maybe in the center of that so if at all the strip is getting cut out so each and every uh, person who is consuming that medicine is actually having that access and here the packaging experts and along with that the designers of that packaging in fact so they have to think differently and they have to think like of a standard how to place that qr code this is what i can add uh, mr amrinder if you can yeah, and then, you know, there are other uh, alternatives, you know, we have valid kind of uh, pouches, which are there, old pressed, you know, with a flip, which has all the more detailed information, you know, uh, especially when you've seen that, you know, many, uh, you know, birth control pills come in that particular, uh, you know, packing, you know, where you have to take a particular pill on a particular day and time, and they have that time zone also there. So, you know, if the packaging is within a term of a pouch or a valid, you know, then there is no issue at all. Uh, barcode could be placed anywhere. Uh, if company is it's it's a, if it is a you know a pack where a bottle is there, probably the it could be inside the carton and one outside the carton also, so that you know both the packs are taken you know into consideration when it is getting printed. So even if there is a tinkering uh, on the outside, there is a QR code which is on the inner uh, flip uh, of that pack. And the patient, when he buys it, and when he opens it, uh, the way he sees the simplest example I could see was that uh, the famous Coke bottle campaign during our childhood, you know, where we used to collect the Coke bottles and then see, you know, open it up and see what is there. So, you know, so there, is, there are various ways where you can put it uh, to incentivize once the people know that to find out the genuinity. And like I said, and if there is a reward attached to it, uh, people will definitely go, you know, uh, you know, miles to ensure that, you know, uh, they get that reward. Uh, we all know how, uh, you know, attractive the jet miles were there and people used to, you know, make sure that they get up an early morning flight just to catch a jet airline so that they could earn the jet miles. So, so you know, it's it's like there, it's, it's a behavioral shift, but yes, uh, it could be, you know, we can easily get that done provided there is an intent uh, and a full strategy to back it. Uh, yeah. from the company. Oh, one more thing to add, a uh, very interesting thing. So technology is actually developing day by day and we are always aware about like how technology shifting is happening. The other day I was reading about edible uh, 3D printed QR codes actually. So not to be surprised, like if uh, coming forward each and every tablet is having a QR code printed, which is edible. But yeah, it is a long way and it is a ambitious uh, things to have. But maybe if the cost... And if, uh, you know, how it is reacting with the medicines, all the stability test and everything is fine. So maybe in future, we can see each and every tablet coming up with a QR code. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, but, for adding this to it. I want, I will, to, add, I want yes, to add something. So suppose at the pharmacist level, those who sell the uh, tablets uh, and a consumer like me may be asking a half a uh, uh, strip. So the at pharmacist level, those who are selling the tablet, they can scan it and have the information with them. Absolutely, sir. And that should be the right approach because considering India as a geography, one educating 130 billion people is much difficult than educating 20 lakhs pharmacies. So at least yeah, yeah. they are dispensing the medicine and if they scan it in the initial level, at least, at least in the initial implementation stage, yeah. so they can ensure that safe medicine is going to the hands of the patients. And it and can, hap that, it yes, can happen in the uh, like uh, small places also, town places yes. and this thing. Because it so, is the pharmacist who is going to scan it. 
Yeah, and we will not be surprised like many of the pharmacists are already having this pharma dispensing softwares yeah. Yeah. for billing. So if they yeah. scan the product, whether the medicine is genuinely dispensed or not, that can also come under the bill of the patient. So there are ways to counter it, the, to counterfeit the counterfeiting of the QR, right? But uh, yeah, this is implementable. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for adding to this. I'll now merge my questions with the questions that are coming with, uh, from our participants. The most important question on the pricing cost and all. Yes. So in India, you know, this is a big mandate by uh, government of India for medicine. But will it become a challenge for pharma manufacturers to implement in the assembly line? Is it going to increase the production uh, cost? Uh, so this has to be answered either by Dare or uh, someone like Dr. Chanshekar who understands yeah. the cost involved in packaging. Yeah. Uh, Dare, you will talk or I should talk first? Oh, so oh. Please go ahead, doctor. I'll talk after you. <laughs> <laughs> See, in last eight days, I have been contacting my previous companies where we used to print, as I have told earlier, a uh, unidirectional barcode. And then it required a special device to see that barcode has been printed properly, the proper information has been taken or not. But even with that, uh, the converter of the packaging, means packaging people, not uh, uh, final uh, customer, uh, we didn't en uh, incur an extra cost to put that barcode on uh, the packaging part because it comes as a graphic from the customer. It is their property. We print it and we give the uh, package to the customer to fill the product inside but as a manufacturing of packaging we didn't incur an extra card as a converter similarly uh, like uh, toothpaste which was my earlier packaging uh, this thing extra tires uh, colgate unilever and png they have already started uh, putting qr code on the toothpaste tube or uh, sachets already and even in the cosmetics part of it. I've read somewhere recently that the food, people, food companies like Tetra Pak, they are also putting a QR code on their packages. So according to me, with the knowledge of uh, conversion, uh, there is no extra cost has been involved, at least for the converter asset to print that QR code. And the uh, beauty here is like with the mobile phone, smartphone even like consumer they can scan it which was not possible with the unidirectional barcode it requires a special device for that so according to me in the manufacturing or converting the packaging there is no much extra cost is uh, required there i don't know about the pharmacy people those who produce the pharmaceuticals they require some more cost by putting the qr code there uh, can I, uh, yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Can, can I can I add something to this? Sure, sure, sure. please go ahead. Yeah, that is then. Uh, first of all, we cannot look at cost in isolation. You know, uh, as a as a as a pharmaceutical marketeer, as a as a uh, this thing, we cannot look at. Uh, Suppose this thing has come, uh, the cost is this. Now, cost has to be looked at from a broader angle. There may be an investment. There may be a capital investment which is there, which is goes into the printing and the packaging. But at the same time, we need to look at what is the overall gain or the revenue that we earn from this investment. It's more of a return on investment. Currently, without this, there's so much of counterfeit. I'm losing so much of revenue. But at a fraction of a cost, which I put in as a capital expenditure, I recover yeah. that lost revenue and that minimizes the chances of loss of revenue. So overall, if I look at, it's a gain for me rather than an investment, uh, rather than as an expense. It's an investment. It's not an expense. So that's the way we need to look at it. And uh, I keep on talking. I've been spending 40 years in pharmaceutical. 
and there are ways and means of looking at the cost. Uh, if we talk about that we are patient-centric organizations, we are a patient-centric industry, we need to do a lot of things. And we cannot look at in isolation of one single element. We need to look at more holistically and approach issues more holistically. That's my uh, suggestion. Thank you, Ashok, sir. You have put it on the broader perspective for every company to uh, uh, start uh, making inroads into the segment. I believe many companies are doing it also, sir. But it's the right time that we make it a habit or rather a, a, a inbuilt thing while we are manufacturing uh, uh, drugs, the, the uh, medicines which can save or you know take lives of patients. So Absolutely right. Absolutely. Thank you, sir, for uh, this. And Dare, over to you for uh, sure. the insights on what happens to the cost part. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so I really want to appreciate Dr. Ashuk for that point. I think that's a very valid point, as well as Dr. Abiyaka for, you know, so his own point earlier, as well as regards the packaging cost, right? Um, but another way to look at it, one of the major reasons why we've seen pharmaceutical manufacturers shy away from investing in, in serialization. Again, we need to understand that serialization is the creation of unique identity on each pack. So basically, we need to understand that the QR is not just one QR with an hyperlink. It is a QR with a unique identity linked to an hyperlink. So which means every pack would carry a unique identity. Now, because of that, this is why there's a bit of expense added to you know, that manufacturing process, which as Dr. Ashut said, should be seen as an investment. Now, this unique identity, for you to print them on the pack, yes, there will need to be some modification done to your production line, not because of the printing, but rather because of the process that is involved in the serialization of products. Now, what are these processes? <clears throat> the whole process is something called commissioning. So every QR code, every unique QR code printed on the pack, right, needs to be verified as authentic before it is activated. So for that to happen, there will need to be scanners, automated scanners directly on the production line. Now, that is an investment, right? That's so you need to investment. modify your production line yeah. to put in cameras. Now, these cameras will scan the QR code as it is passing through the line to commission them. So what these cameras are doing is automatically checking if that unique identity was well printed and if it was, it to commission it, right? Now that process of commissioning leads to aggregation. So basically aggregating, digitally aggregation, right? Digitally aggregating the primary pack into the secondary pack, the secondary pack into the tertiary pack and so on till you get to the, uh, uh, to the pallets and then the, the container, right? Now, all of these processes would involve scanning autom automatically on the production line, which in incurs you know, some additional costs. But then this additional cost should be seen as an investment because you get two returns. Returns from, from the fact that your products would then be serialized and then has higher chances of fighting against, against uh, 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 counterfeiting, right? This can become the standard in the markets. This is the standard in most developed parts of the world, right? Uh, and this can help to win market share back for the government of India uh, and the rest of Asia. Now, now the second benefits of this, uh, particularly looking at it from the Check It technology side, is that we are able to add, again, intelligence on top of the authentications that is happening. So which means you can still gather data and use this intelligence to make better marketing decisions and better sales decisions and better better uh, product development decisions as well. So it becomes a two win a two win point for uh, um, uh, benefiting, right? Now, in terms of that, you know this this the, the process I just explained uh, is it to be much more appreciated by the larger manufacturers, right? Those with sophistication on their production line and ability to afford this. So this global uh, manufacturing license orders. But what, what about the small manufacturers, right? Uh, it's a whole industry as well, right? There are several medium-sized to small-sized 
pharmaceutical manufacturers, so you know, which which creates the generic brands, right? Uh, we can't take them out of the market as well. So we have to figure out a way in which you know serialization can also be cost effectively deployed for them. And one of the ways that we've realized that that can be done is by providing serialization post production. So that means after you produce the pack without you know creating the sticker label or creating the unique idea of the pack on the production line, you, you use your normal production process. Now after the after the production, we can then provide you with a printer that would then print these serialized codes out as additional stickers. Now these stickers can then be semi-automatically or manually fixed on the boxes, right? And, we, and they can still be commissioned with a barcode, handheld barcode scanner. You know, so this process is a bit more tedious, right, than the automation. However, it's a bit more cost, it's a lot more cost effective, rather, for the medium size and small size manufacturers, for them to also be able to be incorporated into the serialization ecosystem. Um, so this way, you know, we can have, uh, you know, lower costs for serialization for smaller manufacturers. And then you have, you know, uh, more sophisticated guys in the industry uh, use the the you know production line serialization which of course yes it can be more expensive however the benefits is outweighs the expense and we need to start thinking about it from the point of view of you know how can we systematically strategically create return on investment on the that we are trying to make a standard in the market thank you uh daddy i i agree with you on that and the other thing is we need to also look at, I think you will endorse, that we need to look at economies of scale. And, uh, you know, like, for example, today, it's three and if I am a pharmaceutical company and with a new law, two of my products have to be, have to have this QR code. If I take a decision as a, as a managing director of the company that no, why only two products, it's mandated by the government, but I take my higher selling products, all the higher selling products as uh, into it. And um, as per economies of scale, my costs will come down because I don't have to get into the change uh, part and uh, the printing process. Everything will get, uh, the cost will get allocated uh, and get spread it. Very, very truly said, sir. I think, uh, you know, why wait? You know, uh, government has given 300 today. Uh, what stops them that tomorrow they will come up with another 500 or 1,000 lists? And, you know, you can't keep, you know, adding uh, new processes every time. And like yesterday we were discussing, you know, it's a Davaka Aadhaar. You know, just like a Aadhaar card, we all have it. And now we see that how, you know, easy the life comes, you know, because it's a unique identity for yourself, whether it is to open an account or to make a UPI payment, you know, you it gets so easily done once you have that UID created. So similarly, when it's UIDs are created for your medicines, it becomes very easy to, you know, uh, leverage a lot of, uh, you know, value from that. Because at one go, we can do it for a large number of products instead of doing again and again after the intervals, which cost uh, time as well as more money. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And, and I agree as well, because I feel it should be seen as a standard standardized process. Yeah. You know, it should be seen as a standardized process. You yep. know, that can scale, just like you said, scale across different products in the industry as a standard. Um, so once it's been embedded like that in the process, you know, it becomes it becomes a no brainer that the government can create this as a standard, a market standard. And uh, the unit economics would, would reduce because then the volume of products that needs to be serialized would increase significantly. And then the price can cut across. So absolutely, I, I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, Dare. And now we will move to questions from the participants which have come to us. There are a lot of questions. One question, Viplav, uh, if you are aware about in this list which government has released, is it covering only allopathic medicines or is there any hint of homeopathy, Ayurveda or all medicines 
that is one well, question that is covering all uh, allopathic medicines allopathic medicines thank you so much for this input would you like to add something to the discussions from the legal perspective which has happened till now yes so <clears throat> if you remember during covid uh, there was a direction that everybody uh, temperature of everyone should be checked before they go into malls and all and you would uh, find it interesting that in india almost everywhere including shops malls schools everyone had this scanner so it is not that india cannot implement it i think so the problem uh, not the problem the challenges which is going to be like because uh, if you would note that the drug manufacturing companies or importer companies either they do it by themselves or they hire a third party individual or an organization to complete the printing and the labeling process so what needs to be upgraded is that these individuals or these organizations who are carrying out this exercise they also have the input or they also have the mechanism wherein they could provide the qr code along with the other labeling or or packaging it is important to know that most of the companies including pharma companies undergo corporate structuring changes either there is a merger demerger acquisition there is a name change so earlier what used to happen is that that there, there would used to be one or more two months time wherein inventory management used to be done by the companies wherein these changes are been taken care of so now these changes can be done by any individual who has a printing facility only what they need to do is they need to ed edit or change the name of the company from abc to xyz or any change in the other other uh, no labeling practices but what they need to also integrate now is that if there is a change in the labeling they also can change the qr code also because qr code will go along with the labeling so it's not only the technology it's only i mean uh, the technology upgradation has to be done by these individuals who are into the packaging and labeling you know for drug products so so just to clarify the government has mandated only 300 products but a manufacturer or an importer is free to put the labels or put the qr code in any other products the, there is no restriction behind it but if tomorrow the government makes an amendment that only for 300 drugs these these kind of uh, inputs which is there 11 or or 10 uh, kind of information which is usually there in the products even if it's not a qr code it is just what the government is trying to do is that encapsulate every information which is there on the labeling of the drug product should be there on the qr code so, so that's a direction thank you thank you for the input sir i'll quickly allot 15 minutes for the q a uh, let me take few questions and then i will we'll open the forum for uh, one or two direct questions for the speakers also one question is just keen to know can't spurious manufacturers also make spurious barcode to deceive public i think uh, uh, we have answered it that yes but you need to have a closed loop system if i'm i'm right uh, uh, answering it any addition to the answer so swati and dari you are correct so what i intended actually is that they are not going to copy the original qr code the, the the spurious drug manufacturers they will have any random qr codes it may or may not have any linkage so because most of as as uh, dr asok stated that we do not buy checking the qr codes we do not even check at the times what if a drug product is being manufactured by actual manufacturer or not so most likely the spurious or 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 the misbranded drug manufacturers they will have some random qr codes which will look like qr codes but this will not have original qr codes or will not be tracing into so there could be a second level of uh, uh, you know manufactured goods wherein it is tracing to a portal wherein a consumer would have to pay certain amount of money uh, and and there can be financial uh, you know challenges so that so i mean the, uh, these individuals the, these individuals would also evolve as we evolve agree agree with and, and like i said the the you know the national portal which is there probably that could be one stop you know check uh, to authenticate and verify whether the qr code you know is a genuine or not or like you know it was explained by dare that if you have a web based app or a you know closed loop app and you check it then 
those QR codes will not be read by that app, you know, because that database will not match. So that when the once that matching doesn't happen, you will identify that this is a fake QR code. But more important is the behavioral shift and the awareness that people should check the QR code before buying. Agree, Mr. Mrinda. I had one question, one such question, but I had to skip it because paucity of time. It 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 regard it is regarding the awareness part. Uh, only because we will do everything and anything in our uh, capacity to create a system but until unless the public or uh, the patient and even doctors understand those systems that how to use it how to check it won't be a uh, uh, just to success. add i think another so, another point another point or question might come is that you know whether what if there is no internet or whether what if the patient or the end user doesn't have a smartphone and i think the checkit also has a very good technology called as ussd for every barcode which is printed there is also a ussd number which is there so the way you check your train tickets pnr you know where you go to you put a sms then you put a star asterisk uh, and you put that serial number and you send a sms to that particular number and you get all that information so even if the uh, the end user doesn't have a smartphone or he is in an area where there is no connectivity the ussd code which comes mandatory with the checkit technology that every qr code will have a ussd code also printed along with it and so that a patient can then just text that message uh, with that the way we check our you know like i said i gave a simple example of checking the bank balance or checking the st status of the train uh, whether it is our ticket pnr number is confirmed or not similarly that can done and all that information will come in an sms to that patient what is the batch number whether it is authentic or not who is the manufacturer uh, and so and so forth yeah this is interesting and i believe more tech will evolve making it more secure in future okay uh, the question does patient uh, can patient demand a product with qr code to retailers why not i think as in the, uh, companies uh, uh, do it patient can surely demand but patient has to be aware even patients like us are not aware to you know scan it and ask for a genuine product so that more is the major patient, question that all of us have more than the yeah. patients first the doctors and physicians should be aware i think that should be the first point of pharma should go and talk to doctors that here is a company which we are so patient centric that we have gone ahead and we have printed qr codes so that you know your patient gets the genuine medicine so first and foremost when physicians they are aware they will tell that okay you buy this medicine and when you are buying that medicine please make sure that there is a qr code and you check that qr code before you actually consuming so the awareness uh, comes both at the doctor level and at the uh, mass level also no but as but as per the current law only 300 medications are coming with yes. the qr code so 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 you know the the doctor might be prescribing a product which is not within the 300 list and then the patient goes and asks so that's not fair uh, that's not fair so uh, it's not that the patient has got the liberty of asking for a qr code otherwise say the patient can move to 10 chemist shops but it is if it is above 300 uh, not within that 300 the patient will not get the medicine so you know we need to we need to be more uh, with the feet on ground uh, on that and that is why i mentioned uh, earlier that organizations should on their own be proactive rather than reactive uh, that's the number one uh, why should our mindset is a question of our mindset why should we wait till the government mandates why not think about that i i had a pharmaceutical company i am responsible and accountable for the health of the patients and therefore let me do everything which is possible to ensure that my patient gets the product with the right integrity so yeah, until and unless that mindset comes i'll just focus something i am i am out of my headquarter i am in a hotel 
And just while we were talking, I just saw the importance of the QR code and the awareness <laughs> which is being created. Just, uh, just imagine they are talking about a room service on QR code. I did not lift the phone and talk. They're talking about a menu of which is there. They're uh, talking about the housekeeping. Everything they're talking, uh, just scan the QR code. So this is the type of awareness which is being created and the popularity of the QR code which is there. So uh, I think we Indians are taking, uh, uh, adopting technology at a fast pace and uh, I don't see that day far off when our life will be all revolving around just this Android phone, nothing else. So better use it for scanning rather than uh, just wasting time on. <laughs> I think know? I would yeah. just love to add um, one thing to what doc, um, Dr. Ashok said. Uh, to be to be fair, when we speak with manufacturers, yes, um, things like this are always an issue. They always want to do it when it is um, mandated. For example, in Nigeria, um, many years back, um, manufacturers were mandated to put um, a numeric code on their products, on and it was mandated for anti-malaria and antibiotics. Um, it wasn't mandated across across all pharmaceuticals. But what happened was that when other um, sectors started seeing the benefits, they started adopting it. For example, the anti-diabetes um, uh, medication we currently work with in Nigeria, it is not a regulation, but they have adopted it because they were having issues of parallel imports that they had to stop. And using our solution has helped them stop that um, issue of parallel imports. Distributors are now knowing that, oh, these are the right products to buy. Um, there's also an antibio um, uh, a multivitamin that we um, partnered with last year. Um, they are not mandated to have these codes on their products, but they came to us and they wanted patient engagement they, they, because they always had to go through um, physicians before to get to the patient. So they wanted this and they did a campaign using um, these codes on their products. And in about six months, they saw a 10% increase in their sales. So when manufacturers start seeing um, these additional benefits, because to a large extent, a lot of managing directors are moved by sales figures, by numbers, these kind of numbers. Um, so when they can start seeing that um, such initiatives can help you um, also increase your sales, it starts being something they want to um, really consider. So it's a good start for um, India. I think with 300 now, when more manufacturers start seeing that it works, because I think that is the doubt a lot of people have, if they see that it works for this 300, I think a lot more manufacturers will be ready to come on board. Right, Tosin. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I agree. It, it's, it's also a question of culture. You know, like in India, if we are manufacturing a good and we have to export that, we go by the export requirement of that country uh, as such. Why can't we look at that a patient in India is the same as a patient in the US? Both are patients. Why do I maintain a different standard for a patient in the US and I maintain a different standard for a patient in India? The moment that culture, that mind shift change, that there's a shift in the mindset, I think this becomes adaptable and implementable uh, much more easily. Agree, Ashok, sir. The mindset shift even at the consumer ends. Yes. Uh, who understands that uh, we have to take, this is medicine. We, you cannot just buy it and uh, take it. You need right. to have some you know, trust uh, development in between. And I believe QR codes can be placed there. There are a lot of questions coming up on the counterfeiting means even copying the QR code. I, I think we have answered it very mentally that yes, but no also if you have a good uh, uh, loop mechanism. For more you know, detailed questions, you can connect directly with Check It team. They have their website and everything ready and they have given the mail ID. So you can get into the understanding part of it uh, directly with them. 
question like uh, one question to um sort of sort of this question says professionals pharmacists and quality assurance and quality compliance departments are available at each step of production so what is the reason to implement qr code <laughs> the simple answer is still everything is there counterfeiting is also there right so the fact is that like uh, we are actually trying to build up a mechanism wherein consumer is engaged so consumer if it is engaging apart from some agencies and he is worried about his health and if he is worried about what medicine he is taking that is the reason why we are implementing qr this is the short and sweet answer that everything is there in the place but still counterfeiting is there so trying to engage the end consumer in the process so that it can be counter attacked right okay there are uh, more questions let us open the uh, forum for one to one interactions now uh, so, uh, please raise your hands and uh, we will uh, take up the questions directly please keep your questions short and uh, engage with the speakers uh, briefly so mr akash yes satish if you can open the forum for one to one yes i have unmuted so mr akash can you unmute yes please go ahead yeah good afternoon all uh, the panelists it's it's really ever, as i've already mentioned it's one of the um, very good topic which is moving towards the betterment of human uh, mankind uh, you know uh, but the implementation part as lenin also has said and dr ashok sir also has said implementation is one thing you know in india uh, basically uh, you know we have to have the fear factor you know at time it works uh, you know the best example was covid wherein everyone was scanning and going so you know likewise for the qr code now how can we do this is that we are having almost 25 to 30 lakh retailers so you know engaging them you know half of the half of the work will be done through them we have the partners the stockists uh, you know the wholesalers so you know we have to have a model uh, wherein we have to engage them and make the things implementation uh, the topic has been good but if we go in uh, in india which is a big uh, you know uh, geography so basically we have to have them uh, considering them and as rightly said by uh, you know someone he doctors yes of course they are the one you know the importance of this otherwise it it would be uh, in a way ki, uh, you know a substitute shot so that should not be happened because medicine uh, you know own medicine taking is of course uh, illegal and it's hazardous as bad so these are the basic things uh, the the basic point what i want to say the 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 resources what we are having you know related to pharma industry the stockists the doctors and everyone so how probably that discussion also is very important if we want to go a long uh, way in this uh, you know better mind Thank you. Uh, very, very true. Like, but if you see, every medicine shop will have a QR code to accept the payment. Most of it, yeah, in fact. Yeah, now, even yeah. we also have a a Golgappa or a street vendor. Also, he takes a QR code and acceptance. So the awareness is definitely there. When we can scan a QR code with the trust of a UPI and give money to somebody, why should we refrain? ourselves for not scanning a qr code for a medicine which we are going to take inside our body so it is just a mind shift change is there that before taking a medicine i will should scan the qr code because this medicine is going inside me and when i have a trust of a qr code when i am giving the money outside the same trust should be there when i am also injecting the medicine so that's my take on this uh, you know uh, Uh, just uh, add um, one thing to what you said. We've seen the same thing play out in Afghanistan and Nigeria. There are lots of similarities with India. Absolutely, so there, absolutely. There was also um, the problem of um, getting the retailers involved. So what we did was we partnered um, with the bodies that these retailers belong to. For example, in Nigeria, we work closely with the Association of Community Pharmacists. um so we work with them they have access to these um pharmacies across different locations so we provide um these bodies with um the information uh, and the resources to spread this information and they handle the education of these pharmacies and we see that it works very well so i'm sure india has such structures that um, um stakeholders so it will fall on the manufacturers um the the regulatory bodies 
to take on the 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 the, the, uh, the, the challenge of working with these bodies to educate these retailers um, and pharmacists. Agree with you, Darren. Uh, and uh, uh, partnership uh, is the answer to creating awareness at all levels and at a, at a faster pace. Uh, that's it. So in India, we have the All India Organization of Chemists and Druggists, to which a body, to which all the distributors, all the retailers, everybody, they are members of this association. So maybe that we can partner with this association and at the same time, we can also partner uh, with the government in order to spread the awareness of the QR code and uh, getting them to the side all on the same page. Uh, Ashok sir, will it be possible for companies to launch campaigns on educating uh, patients about yes. scanning the drugs, right? So few yes, companies it, can even, you know, move into that direction and become the pioneers, become the leaders in educating such things. Absolutely, Swati. Absolutely. So companies individually can do. Companies can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, IDMA, uh, like IPA, like OPPI can sit with the AFCD and also say that this is something which needs to be spread across. So uh, it's, it's a question of partnership. And at the same time, individual companies can also launch awareness programs. But individual launching will be more expensive. So best thing is to partner uh, and uh, do that. Perfect. Thank you, Shok sir. There's a question, uh, Mr. Sanjay, just give me a moment for Mr. Biplab. Uh, uh, Mr. Biplab, regarding this uh, government no, uh, 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 notification that came, most of the MNCs do not manufacture their brands here. Is it applicable for them also? Yes. It includes manufacturer and importers and without which a drug cannot be sold in India. So every manufacturer, including loan licensed manufacturers, uh, will have to follow this. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Mr. Sanjay, you can directly interact. Over to you. Please unmute. Yeah, yeah a very good afternoon to the panel. Uh, good afternoon, Swati. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, discussion on QR codes and the things. Uh, however, uh, practicality of the thing would be in case a patient goes to a shop, there are multiple brands written in that prescription and it is an emergency case. I'm just giving a case study possible. Very much, very much, it will be a practical thing. So in that multiple brands, how many brands can a patient who has to scan and then get the correct QR and then can buy the real drug? Number one. Number two, how much time? As somebody said, yes, there is a problem of all not having an Android phone in their hand and literate and illiterate people all are there in our country. How far would we practically accept? Yes, it's a very good effort. I would say it's a real one which is needed. But how far it is practically getting adopted and done in the field, in the market? Anyone would like to discuss uh, uh, this? Okay, scene? I can um, throw some lights. Um, for us at um, Check It, um, because we have um, incentives attached to, like we said, rewards attached to when, whenever a consumer verifies any of our um, codes, we see that 60%, up to 60% of the products that carry these codes get verified. This is what is happening in the markets that we are currently operational. And we do not see that it will be different um, in India if um, we apply the same principles that we currently apply. Then in terms of how long it takes, uh, verifying can take for us just to see the product feedback. You scan it and you see the feedback takes as, as, as low as five seconds. It can happen in five seconds. So it doesn't take um, a lot of time out of the, 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 the buying process. Um, but to then take the surveys, because like Dari said, we add surveys to this um, verification to help manufacturers collect more insights. That takes maximum 20 seconds. A lot of times, 15 seconds. So you can see that it doesn't take a lot of time. And the fact that these consumers 
are going to get something back for participating, um, we average about 60% verification rates currently. I hope that answers your question, Sanjay. Partly, I think, uh, but uh, Mr. Sanjay, I think uh, you are asking. Yeah, still it's a partly answered because yes. I was talking about literacy as well as illiteracy. How okay, many people okay, with awesome. the 15, 5, 20 seconds doesn't mean okay. anything for that person in India specifically if it's a patient from a very rural area. They don't even okay. know in that how case, to... uh, In that case, I think the chemist and the pharmacist can help him because uh, he, by doing this, he is doing a favor to that patient of for getting that reward points. So I, if I'm a, if you know, I, I'm just putting myself, but if I have a chemist shop in a rural area and if I get an illiterate patient and I will tell him that, look, if you can do this fine or I do it for yourself, but by doing this, you will get one raffle ticket, which will help you in uh, getting something. I'm sure they will do. So like I said, the awareness both at the doctor level, at the pharmacy, at the community level will help us. Sir, here the thing again happens is spurious drugs, the fault fake, fake drugs are sold by that chemist itself. So in that case, they will never tell that patient to get into this. Majority of this because they're just only interested in currency, money. Um, so I think then, then so, the, you know, <laughs> the, the conversation is not there because what we are trying to do is to solve that problem. Now, you know, uh, if that person is not ready to buy this uh, solution, we cannot solve the problem. This is a solution for a problem. Okay. Um, no, I agree. I agree that this is a genuine problem. It's a very practical problem uh, that uh, you uh, want to discuss over here. And uh, particularly when you get into the rural parts of the country, the villages of the country, uh, it is there. Now, this has to be done. It's not only that the patient can do it. At the time of buying, the distributor can check it because the QR codes are there on the primary, secondary, and tertiary packs. So when the stocks come to them, that's one point where they can check the QR codes and ensure that it is not a counterfeit drug which they are keeping. The second thing is at the retailer level. So at the retailer level, retail pharmacy level, they also randomly check uh, from which distributor it is coming and check on the QR codes and see about the authenticity of the drug uh, which is there. If at least these two are maintained, maybe you will ensure that you are not giving a counterfeited or spurious drug to the patient. So it has to be at multiple levels. Interventions have to be at multiple levels. Interventions cannot be just at one level that is the purchaser of the drug. It has to be at multiple levels. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Ashok. I think you are absolutely spot on. Um, to really get the benefits of serialization, um, which is the concept what we are discussing, it has to be across from the distributor who receives it. So when you um, put these codes on all packaging levels, for example, the government has to now be the one, because this is how it happens in the US, in Nigeria, and in other countries that have um, implemented serialization. So the government mandates it that even the chemist, before he or she sells a medicine, they have to verify on their own system. Now, at that verification that is happening by the, the, the chemist or, or by the distributor, every single verification yeah. is being logged with the government. Okay. And their system monitors. So, for example, if they spot a code in, um, I, I do not know the different parts of India, let's, if they spot a code in the south of India, and they spot another code in the north of India, the system automatically flags it that there is a problem here. So like Dr. Ashok said, that monitoring has to happen to be foolproof, 100% foolproof. It has to happen not just from the patient level, but from the pharmacists, the distributors, down um, every part of the supply chain. But we see that that is the future for this regulation in India. 
Thank um, you, Dr. Swati, I would like to ask, add something. Um, actually, Sanjay, Mr. Sanjay, this was really a brilliant question, and this was this is the problem. In fact, we all know that uh, like uh, in which level of the supply chain, the counterfeiting drugs are getting infused with the original drugs, and it is perhaps happening in the majority of the chemist uh, suppliers. In fact. So uh, identifying this issue when it is an emergency situation, believe me, if I would have been in an emergency situation, if it is a life and a death threat, so I would immediately purchase the medicine and go away instead of scanning a QR code. This can happen. But yeah, always we can have some mechanism because this is something like it is a very new thing. We are trying to implement it. And at least we are trying to create the fear in the mind of the spurious drug maker that this is not going to happen and you are not going to enter into the system. And this fear will definitely lose on some business. And instead of going ahead with the unethical drugs, and they can they can also come into the mainstream. Apart from that, when we are having this type of vaccinations for our child and back, every time there is a vaccination chart, we are putting up this label and putting it up on the vaccination that this vaccine has been administered into the child. So something like that, if the medicine is getting, uh, you know, uh, like if it is spurious, and if we have that label pasted into the prescription, Later on, if something happened to the patient, there can be always a mechanism of, you know, punishing the chemist or deep digging into the process. So what I want to say that this, this is one big problem. But yeah, we are just starting the process of streamlining all these issues. As and in, as in when we will be going ahead and implementing the process, I think hopefully not 100%, at least we'll be marking a benchmark of 90-95% of that. But very nice question. And it should be think from the beginning itself. Thank you, Saurabh. And thank you, Ashok, sir, Amrinda, Tosin, for responding to this question. Mr. Sunil, uh, Lewis, uh, you can uh, please interact with the speakers today. Mr. Sunil, if you can. Interact. Ask your question. No question. Okay, so let us take the next one. Uh, Miss uh, Rashmi Tiwari. Uh, Miss uh, Rashmi, if you can unlock, uh, sorry, unmute and uh, ask your question. Yeah. Yeah, Swati, thank you so much. And I must appreciate all the speakers. I mean, it has really widened the spectrum of all marketeers. Now, my question is, I understood, I understand it very well that there is a behavioral shift which is required. So I have two questions. One is that is the marketing team that should be taking initiative because this looks like more of packaging, marketing and production department who have to initiate the work. So will marketing operations be intensified or will that department, which is actually a separate department, will be taking the initiative? This is part one of the question. And part two of the question is the companies who are already into it and who have understood this very well uh, earlier, maybe, uh, you know, who proactively acted upon it and the cases which are happening, which partly has been answered by a few of, uh, of the speakers. I mean, I would just name uh, Cipla, Ipka, and uh, US Vitamin and Zydus. And very recently, uh, even Alembic also, right? So these companies are already into it. They're all the drugs are having QR codes. And uh, I mean, it's a little unfortunate to see that uh, maybe the gurus of digital gurus have copied the drug and those drugs are being sold. Monter, Atorva, Zero Doll, there all the QR copies are being copied in the strip and those strips are also being sold. And as recent as 2nd December, I mean, just a day back, I mean, this case has been, uh, I mean, noti notified by DCGI. So for nine months or 10 months, they were doing. So a company who is not into it, definitely a huge scope for them. However, for companies who are well versed with the advantages of QR code, uh, how, I mean, it has still been copied, you know, and sort of said that copying is just a random copy, but it is seen that it is little beyond that, you know, so this online scam is a big question, Swati. I know I my question is a little long, but I really wanted an answer. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Priyal. These two so, questions. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, may, may, may I, Ashok, I, sir, uh, uh, I mean, sir, yeah, let like, Ashok, sir, please, if you can. Okay. Answer. The first part of the question, whether it's the marketing team, it's the entire organization. It's a cross-functional team which needs to put their heads together in order to ensure that this is implemented and uh, is into operations. So it's not only the responsibility of an individual department like packaging, but it's both the supply chain, the finance, the marketing team, the legal, the medical, every single function of an organization is responsible and accountable for this. The second thing is, today we are discussing about the QR code in order to ensure that the counterfeit, anti-counterfeit measures, uh, QR code is an anti-counterfeit measure. Uh, let me also uh, elaborate a bit. There is not one single approach which can lead to anti-counterfeiting. So the packaging itself is also evolving. We need to look at what are the different types of packaging which we can deploy into other than the normal blisters or the normal alu alus or the normal strip or whatever. What are the new types of packaging that we can deploy, which is difficult to copy? So the QR codes is another. There's something which even uh, was mentioned that the ingestible tablets are having some sort of a mechanism which is under trial, that you ingest the tablets and the QR codes are there, or the holographic things are there on the tablets. So multiple measures are being taken. So uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful question. And I think one word is answered is innovation, a constant innovation to manage these counterfeit drugs. Now, does it mean that the counterfeiters will stay quiet? They too will start working and utilizing their intelligence towards a direction which is not wanted. But at the same time, we as pharmaceutical manufacturers need to keep on innovating, keep on changing so that the cost of copying it will be higher and you reduce the chance of counterfeiting. So we, it is like technology. Technology becomes obsolescent very fast. And th that is the type of technology that we need to deploy in order to ensure that anti-counterfeiting measures really ensure that the patient gets a product which has the right integrity. <coughs> so innovation, faster obsolescence of technologies is something which will ensure that it's not copyable. I'm not telling 100% it will be taken care of, but to a great extent, it will be taken care of. Thank you, Ashok, sir. Mr. Amninder, if you want to... Uh, yeah, to just to add to uh, Rashmi, you know, were those QR codes functional? Now, I'll tell you, even if you go and buy uh, in a small, uh, you know, to a pan shop and buy a small packet of Sapari, there will be a small QR code printed on it, you know? But if you see, that is, has no meaning at all. So and so forth, for that matter, you find, go to any consumable store, you will find QR codes, but these are just plain stickers, which has no functionality attached to it. So the QR code, which pharma has to uh, adopt are the functional QR codes that when you scan it, it has to come up with some click to action or some, you know, action is there. Otherwise, it is just a plain sticker and you and you can do a test yourself. You can go to any shop or you can in your own house, 
just pick up anything which is of fmcg uh, maybe your oil or something and uh, you will find that these are just stickers your phone yeah. is not able to just scan that thing you know sir so, just uh, uh, yeah. yeah rashmi please uh, go ahead okay uh, saurav and amrinder sir i mean the uh, example which i have quoted is of the companies who are into yes. it and who exploited it to a greater extent you know monter of sipla atorva these are all very big multi crore brands you know and i have personally worked in the company so i know that how much of in depth uh, way that people have gone those days however i have sort of said that it is i mean innovation is happening with such a great speed so maybe not to the extent that edible qr code on the tablet and things like that but for sure these companies have done it very nicely sir yes I mean, but yeah. but rashmi yeah, i think I... the the point which is there is that was this qr code with some gratification or loyalty points what tosin said had mm-hmm. that been a push or a marketing strategy the adoption would have been much higher now printing a qr code is one thing making right. it actionable is a second part of it now okay. whether any sipla or any of these examples which you are saying whether they connected loyalty points whether they insisted on some kind of a redirection to, is to be there or some kind of a campaign for their doctors that this is what we are doing or to the consumer no it was just printed because it was probably a mandate or they wanted to it was a you know upgradation of the system but more important is accessibility into the qr codes how do you get insights do running did, they, did any of the companies run a survey no so there we are trying to build some kind of an accessibility into it some kind of a motivation for the end user to use it at at the same time authenticated so which is what is missing and probably the marketing team should have taken that lead that okay if there is a qr code i want to make it actionable i want to go and do a campaign with that so that was missing okay um, so, thank you uh, okay so sure. one one right. thing i just will ask you rashmi this news came on uh, second in fact and third yesterday i just went to the pharmacy to understand mm-hmm. to scan the code myself and i have done it yesterday night itself and i shared it with uh, dr swati so the basic thing the the qr code whichever packaging they were having without taking the name the only thing was this was only an informative qr code what is the batch number what is the serial number what is yeah. the mrp and what is the uh, package date of manufacturing of what is the uh, huh, uses of the drug uses of the, the drug ex- yeah expiry yeah. date nowhere in any qr code in the phone itself like it is nothing no no redirection to any applications no verifications not even a single thing that it is genuine okay. i didn't found the word so genuine it's like easy copyable kind of qr code because, because it till now uh, it was it was function. only for information not for any action so what we want to do is like what the government want to ensure is like instead of showing the information there should be a trackability or traceability matrix or some mechanism wherein it can be traced by the patient that it whether it is genuine or not and it was missing it was seriously missing so it was just okay. only like you know uh, having it's a, a qr code one. good to have a basic one and that was the reason anybody can copy it because batch wise batch where whatever maybe the batch one was there they were creating one qr code pasting it on all packaging and leaving it to the market <laughs> and it was easily copyable okay. see um, when when demonetization happened 2000 ka note aaya do din ke baad 2000 ka duplicate note bhi aa gaya we are clever right wo hona hi hai but actually <laughs> <laughs> with the help of this technology and with the support of pharma companies we can establish that mechanism implement kar dena zaruri nahi hai the fact is like implement karke last end user tak kaise pahuncha rahe hain and how it is getting utilized that is important and that was missing in all the companies um, uh, without naming them jitne bhi yeah. maine panch che products dekhe everything right. was missing that information whether it was genuine or not okay closed loop system awesome. closed loop right. closed loop closed system, loop system. is yeah, very important also mentioned twice yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and as a matter of fact we noticed um things like this in the industry uh which is why we actually help those kind of manufacturers like the cpla that um, rashmi mentioned that already have these codes on their products but these codes are not doing anything right now they are not verifying so we have integrated with the eropes and the softwares that these companies already use 
to get these codes on their products. And then our solution makes them smarter and able to be read by phones and verified. So we actually provide these services to them because we notice that there is this lapse. A lot of them already have it on their products, but it is not doing anything. It is just there um, for information gathering. So we help them by connecting. In that way, they don't even need to um, um, change their production or do anything. We just make the codes already on these products smart and able to be verified by a phone. We make it smart QR codes. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Aminder and Saurabh, we, we are running short of time yes. and now we'll have to close it, uh, close the session. Rashmi, you asked a very, very important question. I'll just ask all the attendees here, go back and uh, see uh, and ask your family members how many pharma companies name they remember. At Farmer State Academy, when we teach students, we, we had one-to-one -one interaction. We asked them, name four or five companies that you remember. They will remember only remember when they, they you know, see some benefit, something engagement that these companies did with one-to-one uh, -one with their consumers that was mi missing. And I hope I believe in this space, uh, there is a lot of opportunity to build up your brand, your product, make it safe through technologies like your code and uh, do a lot of awareness campaigns. So that is one small input. So if you literally go and ask, you know, even students of pharmacy college, they will not be able to name even five companies uh, of pharma. And they will just take the tablet. They don't know, they're taking paracetamol. They don't know which company is supplying it because companies didn't engage with them anywhere. Right, right, right. So I think when you take a mineral water bottle, what do you say? Do you say that give me a bislery bottle or what? Bislery. <laughs> you, yes. you give me a bislery <laughs> bottle. Right? Yes. Yes. What do you do after that? You know, right. even I was not aware. I used to just go and see the word bislery and I used to purchase. Now, it has this, uh, thanks to Swati and for creating this awareness in me. Now, this is a bislery bottle. While during the course of discussion, I we were talking about QR codes for the first time that I found out <laughs> that there is a QR code on a bislery <laughs> bottle. Absolutely. I never knew. <laughs> I never knew about it. To be very Does it honest. Work? Now I don't Does know what to do with this yes, QR yes. code. I don't know <laughs> what to do with it. <laughs> so it's all like Swati mentioned. It's all about creating an awareness. It's also cre educating people on what this QR code means and how do we ensure that this QR code give uh, uh, QR code maintains uh, the integrity of the product and uh, it is not a counterfeit product. So. This type of awareness creation is what is needed and education is what is needed. Thanks for, the, for creating add, an awareness in me also. <laughs> Just to <laughs> add, sir, next, next, time, next time you go to McDonald's or KFC, you see yeah. their bill, their bill will also have a QR code. And if you scan that QR code bill, you will get some brownie points in your next purchase. But what we do is we just take that bill and we throw it. So yeah. the companies are doing such kind of smart marketing. Awareness is not there. Nobody tells you. But like I said, go to any good KFC or McDonald's and there's a very long bill they have or even Starbucks. They will have a QR code. You scan it, you will get some additional brownie points or notifications. And that's how loyalty is built. Thank you, Mr. Amrinda. We are going to do that. I once did it, but after that... <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh, all the speakers from the participants i must thank mr kayur joshi i was seeing you know you have been there and you have been listening to us um, and uh, uh, thank you uh, i just saw that you have been engaged throughout the discussion and listening to us thank you kayur and thanks all the speakers dr ashok dr chandshekar biplab uh, amninda sir saurav tosin and dare for giving us wonderful insights into this uh, topic. Topic is broad as always, but still I hope we were able to 
answer majority of uh, questions, give you some ideas and were uh, able to ignite your minds to work beyond what we are doing currently. Uh, we'll keep hosting more sessions. There's next session, which we will talk about the use of artificial intelligence in pharma. Uh, we, will going, we are going to announce it soon, uh, the dates and all. And uh, we look forward to your participation again in all our sessions. And also a build up to World Pharma Brand Managers Day. Uh, this event, which we host uh, as a mega event, it will be held on 13th, 14th and 15th January. Uh, the registration and everything will be open soon. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Tosin. Thank you, Check It app for being a partner and giving us the right information and knowledge and giving us solutions to the problem. Uh, we look forward to building this more with you. And probably all the participants can look forward for some more information which will come through emails post this conference in terms of some kind of a case studies or white paper of success which Check It has achieved in different parts of the world. And probably that will further give them more ideas and insight how to implement it uh, in their own home country. Sure. So to all the registered participants, Pharma State Academy, on behalf of Check It, will be sending you case studies to refer and uh, uh, make your case more viable. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, so you. We, Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. And uh, Bye, before guys. we end, uh, so before we end, uh, there is a process to end the session. Yeah. I am posting. Yeah. A... Bye. So there is a feedback form being uh, 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 circulated in the. So I have posted the feedback form. You leave the meeting by clicking the link for the feedback form, and uh, the meeting will be ending after that. So please uh, click at the feedback form link in the chat box and you can leave the meeting. We'll be there for a few, like 30 seconds more. And after that, we are going to end the meeting. So please uh, just click on the feedback.